Good morning, YouTube. I hope everyone's having a fabulous day today. I am currently borrowing a copy of Spirit Island from Hillside Games so that I can do an unboxing. And I'm super, super stoked. I'm super stoked, you guys. Um, this is a cooperator. Co <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a second. <sighs> Alright. This is a the, the cooperative settler destruction strategy game. It was like they took all of their favorite things and just smushed them into a game, which I am a total fan of. I'm really stoked. It's one of four players. It plays between 90 and 120 minutes, so set aside at least two hours to play this thing your first time through. Age is 14 plus, which makes sense. And I'm going to turn this over. Yep, you can see I have the store demo copy, which is how I'm getting away with opening this. <laughs> The island needs your help. And it has all of these components, and it looks super pretty, and it's by Greater Than Games, who I swear I've heard of before, and I cannot for the life of me remember why. Um, it just might just be because I was really excited when I found this game in the first place, and their name stuck with me. I don't know. Doesn't matter. The point is, is this game exists, and we're about to open it. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> now, I have opened it before um, because I wanted to play it, and then I discovered that it was untouched. And I was not about to ruin that opportunity since I can borrow games. Um, they have a really cool rule book, and it is. Wow, you guys, this is really thick paper. Like, I was expecting, like, you know, paper. This is, this is, this is, like, uh, this is almost cardstock thick. Like, it's thick paper. And it's really well laid out. All of the, wow, look at these wind conditions. Like, boom, laid out, easy peasy. I have no idea what they mean, but I could figure it out from the pictures. Illustrations are really well done. There's a lot of white space. Whoever whoever did their rule book knows what's up. The the sidebars are like legible. They're not like tiny itty bitty scripts. Oh man, this is really pretty. Oh, and there's tips and tricks. I love when games have tips and tricks. Oh, oh hey, uh, they have uh, easier variants for people who are like what. There's gameplay options, there's different maps, there's holy crap gorgeous artwork, there's lore! Oh my gosh, you guys, there's literally lore. Yeah, bend this book. I know, I'm trying not to press too hard. But look at it! There's lore! Oh, that's so cool! Oh no, oh no, 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 stay, stay. Alright, I think the world stopped moving for you guys. So I have my, uh, the enemy advances. So the, the premise of this game is you are, um, some variant of the colonies. Um, and you do not need no Europeans telling you how to live your life because you've been doing it yourself for forever. Okay, thanks. And so the bad guys are literally, um, King Frederick II, um, Queen Elizabeth I. Um, King Eric the 15th, and, uh, various bits and bobs. Wow, and so they have different difficulty charts, plus notes on design, index, and easy peasy, how in the world is this game supposed to make sense? I love it. Okay, I haven't even gotten to the actual game part, but you guys... This is the prettiest rule book I've seen. I don't want to say ever, because I've seen some very pretty rule books. But this, this is art. All right, just, this is art. <sighs> All right, and then we have these maps. We have map A with a front and back. We have map B with a front and back. And we have map C with a front and back. And we have map D with a front and back. 
and each of the little portions of the map are marked with symbols that mean something if you play the game. Um, they are also on the back of that rule book that we were just looking at. And all of this cool stuff. Do you see that? That just looks cool. I don't even know what it is, but I don't want to come across it when I'm walking through the woods at night. I'm just saying. Okay, what else is in here? Don't fall. I have, like, things haphazardly sp <gasps> You guys, they have compartments. Oh my gosh, and they're easy to take out compartments? This cannot be- this literally cannot be their first game. There are... Like... Y'all know, and if you don't know, you're about to learn, that I am a sucker for game design, but my nerdy little passion is packaging. Like, this is not their first rodeo. It can't be. Somebody on their team, if not the entire game development studio itself, but somebody has done this before. They know what's up. They can take them out easily, however you want to hold them. Because there's a second level of compartments with inner compartments within the compartments. Look at this. With more, look, look, okay, there is one, two, three, four, four compartments in this part alone. Alone. You guys. Oh my gosh. And there's cards more cards and more cards look at these little tiny cards aren't they cute and bags and bigger cards wow 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 um i need to reevaluate how i was going to do this uh, unboxing cuz i was not I won't lie to you. I was not even remotely expecting this level of sophistication in their packaging. Um, well, first things first, right? First things first is I need more horizontal spaces. <laughs> Dang it. So we might as well start with the stuff that they already have in bags for us. And I'm very excited about these things. These feel nice, and I haven't even gotten out of the bags yet. So in our first bag, we have tiny little churches, steeples. They have different names depending on the denomination, I think. And these are, yeah, they're molded plastic. They're like nice though. They feel like, um, Like, they're not slick, but they're not, like, overly textured. I think it's just the plastic they use themselves. But it feels, it feels like it should float. Like, that's, that's, it doesn't feel like it's as dense as it could be. So I don't know what plastic that is. I don't have any idea. But I really like the feel of them. Um, but they're also not so light that they're just gonna, like... Someone's going to knock the table, and they all go flying. So those are really nice. So that was cool. And then we have the bigger ones. These monstrosities. Oh, they're hollow. Well, I thought they were molded. Yeah, they're molded. God, what is that? Oh, you know what it feels like? It feels like milk jug. It's that kind of plastic where it has, like, that little bit of texture. Um, just because it does. But it's not, like, going to just die on you. And I'm not talking, like, the, the super cheap, super thin milk jugs. I'm talking about, like, the nice ones, like the $5 gallons. I guess $5 is pretty normal these days, isn't it? Can you tell I don't buy milk? Anyway. Moving on. These are just so cool. Oh, and they have little, uh... Huh. You can see how they were built. Well, I mean, like, the, the, the buildings that they represent. They have, um, little lines to show, like, window awnings and, um, structural timbers and stuff. So that's cool. 
That's that's a level of detail I definitely did. This whole game is just like above and beyond, you know? I'm pretty sure it's one of those $60 games. I'll double check. And um, I'll see what Board Game Geek has to say about it too. Now these ones are the ones I really wanted to test out because look how tiny these things are. Like I feel like I would break them. But if it's that milk jug plastic, yeah, they're, like, I would have to, no. It's not saying that you can give these to your two-year-old and they'd be fine. First of all, it's a choke hazard, and you really, you really should be careful of what your two-year-old's putting in their mouth. But second of all, I could break these if I wanted to. But they're not going to just snap because I picked them up. You know, like, they're fine. And they're really cool. I think they're all conquistadors. Um, yeah, they all look like Spanish conquistadors. Um, does that even have a translation? Like, do any other countries have that particular sort of person? Like, conquerors, obviously. But, like, even in English, we call them conquistadors no matter what country they're from. Because it's a very certain kind of conqueror. I don't know. Anyway, moving on, we also have these little gray bits. I know just enough about plastic uh, manufacturing to um, sound like I know what I'm talking about and then actually be completely wrong all of the time. So I'm going to stop talking about it and just let you know that they feel really nice and they're sturdy and they make cool sounds. I like that sound. In you go. Oh no! I dropped one. Small miracle, I only dropped the one though, right? Oh, I kicked my heater. Decided it had to turn on. Now these are wooden tokens. And they are painted wooden tokens. I know sometimes they like dye the wood or whatever. Um, but they're really nice. They're smooth. They're really smooth, actually. Like, they just slide over each other. Um, what's that game? Is there a wooden variant on air hockey? Maybe shuffleboard? I don't know. Anyway, those would be good for that. So, um, takeaway. Don't, don't all, don't stack them all up and expect them to stay there. Because they like sliding. I was trying not to make a mess, and I just disproved my point, so, you know, there's that. <laughs> what else we got in here? And we have... These are wood, aren't they? Yeah, they're wood. They got little mushrooms. They little mushroom dudes. Wee. No, they're... they're <laughs> I don't know what they're supposed to be. I don't really care at the moment. They're just little mushroom dudes. So they're really nice and smooth and textured on top. Because they're wood. And they're wood. And that's very cool, and I like them. Now, did they purposely... Yeah, you, all of these little mushrooms have little tree rings on the bottom. Huh. That's really cool. I'm pretty sure it's a side effect of however their manufacturing was done, but it still looks really cool. So this is the stuff that was just in bags already in that top tier of um, component trays. Oh, it's a bit close for my liking. So they originally in these two box, or, um, component trays. Somehow or another. I'm guessing kinda like that. So if you were not if you are not a uh, plastic bag sort of person, they do they do stay in there. I tend to store my games um, horizontally rather than vertically, so I can take them off the shelf um, instead of having to like pick up other boxes and get out the one I actually wanted, the ones that aren't in bit boxes, obviously. But bit box no longer exists, and I am too lazy and too. Uh, 
What's the word? I'm not um, impatient. I'm too impatient to, to cut cardboard properly so I can make my own um, bit boxes. So that's those, those are the first two component trays, right? Well, then we had all this stuff, right? So you had the card trays, and one of the card trays had a separate card tray. And then this was just, that was just, I can't believe that there were four separately sized and perfectly portioned component compartments within that big compartment. Like, that just blows my mind. Um, so anyway, so you have all these bigger boards. And this looks like uh, different uh, setups. Oh, they're different um, scenarios from the look of it. So you have spread of rampant green, bringer of dreams and nightmares, lightning swift strike, ocean's hungry grasp, River surges in sunlight. Shadows flicker like flame. Thunder speaker. And vital strength of the earth. And they all have... Okay, good. I need to put them on the right side. They all have special rules. Um, with reminder rules. Um, special powers. And... Um, I can't think of the word for the, the thing where you move your marker depending on how you progress. Progression marker line? Anyway. And the other side has the actual setup, um, what powers you'll end up using, a little bit of lore, um, the kind of play style that scenario is good for in case you've already played the game a few times and you know what you like and what you don't, um, as well as the complexity. Um, so like I wouldn't necessarily hang out with the bringer of dreams and nightmares even though that looks really cool um because that's a high complexity and i'm gonna get really confused meanwhile hanging over here with lightning swift strike check out that thunderbird though y'all look at that that is so mm, awesome but it has a low complexity um so I could get away with that, or like the river surges in sunlight. <laughs> Look, it has a. There's one hiding back there, and it's just like. <sighs> anyway, sorry. Um, that's really cool. All right, so that was the top and biggest one, and then we revealed these guys. They're the terror levels and victory conditions. Oh, but look at those illustrations. Aren't they cool? And this is some marker for something else in the game. So I'm going to pop them out now because I can. Man. That is sturdy. Like, look. Even though there's nothing holding it together. Like, I can bend it on its bad ac or its weakest axis, but, like, actually, like, bending it. It ain't going anywhere. That's really impressive. All right, so I had those. Um, I also have this little mini board that was all tied up. Oh man, that is that is really stiff. Um, so if I was gonna play this, I would um, take some time while getting all of my pieces assembled um, to just flatten this out, bend it the other way a couple times. And I'm sure after your first couple games, it'd be fine. But it really does not want to sit flat right now. But let me clear a little bit of space so you guys can look at it. Oh, that's why there was only two. Okay, so fear level or terror level one is already on the board. Yeah, so he doesn't want to go go that way. There you go. And then it goes to two, and then it goes to three. So that's cool. And we have uh, explore, build, ravage, discard fear deck that has a victory when revealed, earned fear cards, fear discard, the fear pool with uh, reminders, um, the uh, spirit island phase order so that you don't forget how to play since it is a very complex game. Um, so with the phase and the individual parts of each phase listed. Um, and then there's a blight over here with more reminders 
of um, what's going on. So that's really pretty. And it's just plain black on the other side. It's a uh, it's canvas backed or finished or however it is that they do it. Um, and then hiding underneath all of that were these extra scenarios or these other scenarios. So this has Oh, so there's two different sets of cards in this little set. There's the Kingdom of Sweden, hanging up up there. And this is England. The Kingdom of England, in point of fact. And then Brandenburg, Prussia. So they have little maps on one side. Oh, and they're like... And then on each of them... They have um, extra loss conditions, uh, different levels with the fear cards and the game effects, um, and then how they escalate when they get to a certain stage in the game, which is super cool. And then, on this side, we have scenarios. We have the Rituals of Terror, the Guard, Guard the Isle's Heart, Dahand Insurrection, and blitz. Um, and so they have a little bit of uh, flavor text at the top of each, and they have a little list of things that make the scenario a lot easier or a lot harder. Like the blitz scenario is just plain hard. <laughs> but um, the other three have some easy parts and then some hard parts depending on um, how you're playing it. And the other side has rules changes, different victories, different setups, whatever it is that they need. And they also have difficulties. So we have difficulty zero, difficulty zero, difficulty three, and difficulty four. So there's that. <sighs> and that was all in that one compartment. You, I don't even know if you guys can see it because of the way my uh, setup is. So all of that was hiding so there was this, and then there was this, and then there was this, and that. And then there were these. Like, all of that was just hiding under there. Oh, I hit the thing again. I would duct tape it down, except this is also my everything else desk. So, you know, do what you can with temporary setups. Um, I'm going to put these back in the box very nicely, so they don't get messed up. But I will point out that the uh, compartment that they had for this doesn't matter anymore um, because they're not in there anymore. But for like shipping <laughs> and sitting on the shelf until you get around to actually buying it and using it, that's really nice. Card decks with a third one hiding underneath. Man, they're so pretty. I almost don't want to open them. <laughs> I'm kidding. See, I'm glad I put my lid back on because I would have stabbed myself picking this back up. And remember, always carve away from yourself unless you are my grandma skinning potatoes because she has superpowers. Um, or... No, that's pretty much it. There's, there's pretty much no other reason to cut towards yourself. Um, oh, unless you're my grandpa. My grandpa carves wood towards himself. I tried to do that and I stole the scars from it, so I don't recommend it, but my grandpa's good at it. So maybe you just have to have, you know, 50 years of practice in doing it. Are you gonna, are you gonna open? Oh, I got it right on the seam. No wonder it wasn't happy. I'm just babbling. I might, oh no! You guys, I just peeled that card apart. Son of a... And I was just trying to get the plastic off, so I don't think... I did anything much to it. Do I really like that? Can I just peel them up? Yes, okay. So these little ones particularly are really easy to um, peel away from each other. Um, they're very thin. Well, not like super thin. They're like a uh, poker deck thin. So pretty typical. They're linen finished on both sides. Um, 
when I buy this game, I am going to sleeve these. As usual, I'll put the dimensions and recommended um, sleeve types um, up somewhere. Three, two, one, last stop! No, I'm kidding. Um, oh, I bet those match the uh, parts of the island that you're on. That's cool. Oh, shoot. I got so distracted because that card. Now it's closed. Alright, and then these guys. That's what I thought. Oh, they're stuck together. No, not bad. They're just those two. So these have this is all stuff and nonsense to me because I don't know how to play the game yet. I haven't looked at the rules at all, other than from a purely um, uh, display, decorative, design. That's the D word I was looking for. Oh, uh, design standpoint. Um, but they are very obviously. Um, index depending on which of the elemental scenarios you're using or which of the elementals you're using I guess for that matter um, with uh, very pretty cards and then they also have a power progression of um, four of them which explains why those ones were separated from the rest because they are different um, And once again, I have no idea what any of this means, but they're very clear, um, clearly labeled. They let you know what it is. You don't have to flip it over, but it also is, um, each of the corners has the matching color and there's a bottom border on each of them. So it's pretty obvious which one of the four you're using. Um, they have, uh, setup changes and rules changes, um, in small italics and then the actual progression of the power, um, listed out. And then, these cards, which, again, I have no idea what these are for, but it doesn't matter, because I already know that whatever it is I need, they have a speed, they have a range, they have a target, they do a thing, and then they have um, symbols on the side to give you more information so you don't have to read the entire thing every time. Um, there's a speed of turtle, there's a speed of bird. So fast and slow, right? Um, there's a range with an extra icon on some some of them. Um, and once again, all of those are on the back of the rule book for easy reference during the game itself. Um, what they can target, and uh, just look at all these symbols that they have. And the the symbols are color coded too, which is nice. Um, now, from a um, accessibility standpoint I wouldn't say that the uh, colors are necessarily very different depending on what your color blindness is like they're all the similar like value and stuff but it doesn't matter because they all have symbols um, and they're not like a different color symbol within a blob so like those could disappear they're just a darker variant so if you can only see grace you can still see what the symbols are very easily so that's cool. So there's that. Oof. And then there's how to play cards, because this is a, a one to four player game. So there's four each of the turn order and the power and fear effects, as well as spirit actions and presence track icon. Oh, track. That was the word I was trying to think of like half hour ago. And then pieces, damage, and targeting examples. And they're basically, you know, between between these two cards and the back of the rule book, once you have a, a basic grasp of the game, you're probably not going to get hung up on um, the broad strokes. You might have to look up, like, details on the things. 
but um, for just like basic playthrough, like you should have everything you need, which is very cool. Alright, so that was the second batch of cards. And then we have a bunch of minor powers. And we have a bunch of major powers. Ooh. And then we have fear. God, look, just... I'm not going to put it up too close. I want it to be in the light. But that's terrifying. <laughs> like, you know, stereotypical, um, burn down the forest so you can plant some land and it'll have a bit of fertilizer on it already. What is that called? Clear cutting? Um... And then the trees are like, you did what to me? We'll wait till it's dark. Let me show you what you messed up. Like, that's scary. I love it. Oh, so lo those are the fear. And then we have healthy island and blighted island. Remember that little, um, little area that said blight on it on the, um, board? Well, I bet you at least go there. Don't know what they do. Don't know why they change. But that's a thing. And, uh, are they actually thicker? Or are my fingers just confused? No, they're, they're a little bit thicker. Um, so they're, like, playing card. Not the thinner ones that you can find at, like, casinos and stuff, but, like, the thick ones, like, bicycle. Um, but still linen finished on both sides. I probably, um, sleeve limit too. Just in case. Um... <laughs> oh, these are these are glorious. Okay, so they have various um, reasons to be scared: uh, fear of the unseen, scapegoats, emigration accelerates, Dahan on their guard, tall tales of savagery, etc. And depending on what how your uh, your fear is progressing, 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 <laughs> um, either it's the the one that's already on the board, or the two from the card, or the three from the card, it has a different effect. So that's really cool. And and I know that just from looking at it. Like, once again, I haven't looked at any of the rules. So, like, this is a very well laid out card. And it uses all of the um, symbols, which, again, are on the back of the rule book. So you don't have to read, like, a gajillion words. But it's very obvious why um, this is a 14 and up game. Like, there's a lot going on. All right, so there's the fear deck. And the minor powers... Oh. Okay. So these are specifically for those elementals. Or Dahan, I assume, from looking at enough cards. Um, so they're the same setup. They're color-coded, some of them, in the corners. Um, but not necessarily all of them, or maybe some of them just have black. No, it's just not necessarily all of them. Um, and once again, it's the speed, the range, the target, a cool little illustration, what it does, and then the symbols on the side. So it's the same as before, which is cool. They could have easily decided that they wanted to be complicated, and I think they figured the game was complicated enough without them adding to it. So the minor powers, and these are the major powers, once again, the exact same thing. Um... <laughs> they have such fun illustrations. Winds of Rust and Atrophy. Tsunami. Entwined Power. That's cool. Um, and Speed, Range, Target, What It Does, Extras, that might also happen, um, and then the symbols along the side. So that's cool. Um... And that's that's most of what everything's in this box. I have a couple of uh, I have one punch board, so I'm gonna put away these cards real fast, and I'll be right back. All right, so all the cards are put up, um, mostly they mostly stayed in place. They're a little bit fluffed because I, I pulled them out of their um, vacuum sealed stuff, so they don't quite fit perfectly. But I'm talking like five cards <laughs> didn't fit perfectly, so you know, whatever. Now for the punch board. Yeah, I'm just gonna. 
dump them out. And un unlike the, um, those small cards, where clearly I should have been worried, like, this is sturdy stuff. Oh gosh, it's too, st it's too sturdy. Let go. Let go. There we go. Ha! Ah. Yeah, this, this is very sturdy cardboard. I'm not worried about it peeling. <laughs> I think, is, is it stuck on the other side? Yeah, I'm not worried about this peeling at all. Like, I'm, I suppose if I worked at it, I probably could. Oh, gosh. Why are these hard for me? Y'all. There we go. I think I have a system now. Alright, so those were the fear token. Oops. Sorry, other like... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So these are the fear tokens. And these are player markers of some sort. So apparently you play as red, yellow, blue, or purple. Um, and then you have some scoring tokens of some sort. In denominations of three and one. So apparently the scores don't get very high. They don't even have fives in here. That's it. That was easy. Well, after the fear tokens were done. <sighs> Talking the talk without being able to walk the walk. Look at me. Why they? Alright, so we have some ones and then we have some threes. We have the fear tokens, we have the player tokens, and then we have some sort of uh, thing that apparently goes on the board at some point. This says high immigration tile. I vaguely remember that being a, a thing. Oh no, it was fear, it was emigration. So I don't know what this is, um, but this also, um, England has high immigration tile level three, four, and six. Um, Sweden has ravage level one, three, and five. England has build level one. I don't know what any of that means, um, but they exist. So there's that, I guess. They gave, they gave us quite a few more of these uh, bags than I would have expected. Considering there's there's not a whole lot of... Um, well, considering the components that I would have expected to use them for were already in their own bags. So there's the fear tokens. And we'll grab the player tokens. Come here. Please. Thank you. gonna mix up the score tokens because they're very obviously different sizes um it's like a quarter versus a dime um they're very different and i'm gonna leave these out for now and that's that's it that's that's the, all the components of the game so um give me a second and pull the box back up and i'll show you how i managed to fit everything back in it or not We'll see, so I haven't done it yet. Alright, be right back. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Um, like I said before, not all the cards fit because I fluffed them up. I mean, they don't even, they don't even face the same way anymore. Um, but these are the, um, how to play reminders. So I don't feel too bad about them not sitting nicely. Now, I left this bit of cardboard out because if I get down here... I have all of this extra space. So I'm just gonna smoosh them here. Oh, I thought I was gonna squish them there. <laughs> Take two. Do they fit? Because that would be a very fun little puzzle. They do fit, check that out. Hey oh, because they fit right there. Wow, I hope they did that on purpose, because that's amazing. Um, and then I put this cardboard back on top. I'll put the cards back in. 
I'm just gonna divide them. Good lord, why are they all discombobulated? What have I done? Alright, well, those four can go over there, those four can go over there. Stay. And then we have the component trays. Or should I say the other component trays? So this dude. And we have this dude. And I'm sure, like, once once you play, you'll have your own preferred uh, method of, of what goes where and all that. But right now, I just want to get these to also fit into these little um, holes? Compartments? Compartments. I like that word. Compartments. Oh, and that explains the... I don't know why I didn't put two and two together before, but there are four colors in here. I got... I'm... No! I ripped the seam. Well, the real reason why they gave us extras, huh? Let's double bag it. And yes, I should empty them all out and put them into their own bag. But now they're double bagged. And that's just the way they're going to be until somebody else messes this up, because it is a demo copy. Um, and I wonder what other uh, demos you might have from this company. Are you going to lay down? No? That's fair. <laughs> I can't really yell at you for that, because I wouldn't lay down either. Arrgh. Good enough. Right, right. Smush you over there. Smush you over there. Not overly concerned about the actual plastic because we still have some more stuff to put on top. That's right. Remember the maps and how pretty they are? Guess what? They still fit on top. Isn't that grand? There we go. There you go. And then the rule book. What do you think about that? That is that is a gorgeous game. Those are well made components. And holy crud, they put not only just one little inkling of brain power towards storage and packaging, they actually know what they're doing. Like, this game could suck, and I'd still pay money for it. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it looks amazing. It feels amazing. It looks complicated, but not incomprehensible. I actually am going to game night tonight. I'm going to see if I can convince them to play this game. Because I think there's actually going to be four of us. Which will be highly entertaining. Um, but there might be five. So we might not be able to play it even if I could convince them to. Um, but yeah. And it's because it's a one player game. I might uh, see if I can borrow it again. And just play it by myself. And do a review properly. Um... Or I might buy it. Did I, uh... And it doesn't have a price on it because it's demo copy. Um, I will see, uh, what the price is. Um, I'll put a link to, uh, Board Game Geek, of course. Um, I'll put the, uh, dimensions for the cards. And, uh, recommended sleeves for them. Um, it comes with bags. I think that's it. I think that's it. This, I mean, you guys. I'm really excited about this game. And I don't even know when I'll get a chance to play it. But it exists. And that, that in and of itself, given the, the 
detail, the level of detail that went into just producing this game, you should buy it. Because if nothing else, people who put their heart and their soul into something and obviously have crafted it to the best of their ability, they deserve to be rewarded. And I think these guys hit it out of the park. Um, but that's it for now. I will, uh, I'll put a link somewhere, um, for other unboxing videos if you like that sort of thing. Um, give me a like if you like this one so I can do it more often. I know what you guys actually want to see. Um, hit the subscribe button. Um, hit the notification bell, because I'm on a very, uh, random schedule right now. Um, while my work hours get sorted out. Um, so I don't want to tell you guys I'm going to upload these every... whatever, because I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all. I'm out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!